Gas Training Flame Rectification. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video we've got David back from the Care of Boilers and David's going to talk to us about flame rectification in gas boilers. If you like this type of video please put a thumbs up. Also if you can put a comment below and David's going to come back and try and answer some of the questions for you. Without further ado, let's go over to David. Hello, I'm uh, David Istek, I'm a trainer from Vocera. I'm up at uh, Alan Hart's new house. Uh, we were chatting about uh, his boiler and various things in the heating industry and training, that's what I do. We were chatting about flame rectification and he thought it'd be a nice little video uh, just to give you an appreciation of how I think our flame rectification works. I won't show you how to test it on the boiler, I'll just give you the principles behind it so you know what's actually happening. So we'll have the boiler control board, which I'll call PCB. We have a burner with a nice flame on it. We have a lead from the PCB up to a probe that sits in the flame and a ground from the PCB, uh, sorry, from the burner back to the PCB. Now, the, any uh, details I give you relate to the care of boilers, but I think you'll find this works the same way. So we've got a voltage going up to the uh, probe, and on ours, that's 100 volts-ish. AC alternating current so the voltage the electrons are going up and down up and down up and down frame rectification rectify means to change now what happens is you've got um, the, the purpose of flame rectification is to ensure that if there's no good flame the pcb the control board will not allow combustion and uh, to continue if there's a poor flame or no flame the boiler will stop working fail safe so customer wants demand something works the boiler sends fuel up to the burner a flame is established by a spark electrode somewhere else and there are ac voltage coming up to that probe now one of the um, properties of a flame is on the outer layer i'm going to uh, draw a deformed flame so one of the properties of a flame is on the outer section of the flame um, there's an eye the, the fuel is ionized there's an ionized ionization layer and that is um, and you can pass electrons through that outer layer so if you can imagine there'll be uh, you can pass current through the flame so you're putting current up to here there's if there's no flame there'd be no passage of current down to the burner plate here but when there's a flame the current will pass between will pass from the probe to the to the a striking plate or in this case the way i've drawn it a burner now going up it's ac voltage electrons are traveling in both directions and they will travel in both directions from, from the probe down to the striking plate or to the uh, burner. But the difference is they will travel and they have to hit something, they have to make contact with something for the current to be formed. So from that point to here, the electrons pass through the outer layer of the flame, strike the burner uh, bar or plate, and there's current. Now the electrons want to travel back but because the burner plate is so large or a striking plate is so large it hits properly it hits regularly um, reliably but when the electrons pass back up they miss the small point of the probe here so they're missing that point because they're going down but they're traveling upwards and outwards so the voltage which is two-way up to here which is alternating here becomes single volt dc voltage and so the dc voltage then is sensed by the plate and taken back to the pcb 
the, the voltage is rectified from AC to DC. If we didn't rectify it, other, and if, it, if the flame was uh, good, then you're going to get enough current down that, that probe, down that uh, lead to the PCB. There's some advantages, obviously definite advantages in rectifying the, the um, current, because what, and it's a microcurrent, a very small current, because um, it's not just the fact that there is a voltage, it's the amount of voltage that's important, it's the current that's important. And the fact that it's not AC anymore, it's DC that's important. The reason it's important it's DC is it knows, the board knows, it expects only DC current. Voltage, electrons are traveling in one direction. If it got AC current, it knows something's wrong. So if um, debris, carbon, some, some sort of um, debris fell on the flame here, the current could pass through that debris and that means the current would then be passing across whatever obstruction you've got there, whatever debris is on that burner, and it would be traveling in both directions because it would be, it would be able to continue to be AC current. The board would then sense, oh, I've got AC current down here, not DC current, something wrong up here, stop. So that's one of the advantages of the flame rectification process. Um, the other thing is, if you measure voltage, that's okay. That just shows there's the electrons completing a circuit. But the thing with um, flame rectification, it's not just the fact that there is voltage, it's the amount of voltage, it's the number of electrons. So what you've got, if you've got a weak flame or a deformed flame, it might pass some of the electrons, but it won't pass all of them. So if you measure voltage, the voltage is telling you one thing, but what you need to measure is current, and it's going to be a very low current, um, microamps. So it's measuring the number of electrons. Are you getting enough electrons? Yep, that means the flame is of a good enough size to pass that current, and so the current comes back and uh, everything works and continues to work. So AC up, DC down, flame rectification. AC here, boiler knows something's wrong up here because it must be using some debris or whatever to pass AC. It should only be DC because if it's uh, DC, then it knows that the electrons are going from the probe to the striking plate and the, and the returning electrodes are missing the probe. So that's changed it to DC. And uh, if there are enough electrons coming through, making it back to the PCB, you know whether there's a strong enough flame. Flame rectification as I describe it. I hope that's of interest. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, David. Um, if you've got any questions, please put them in comments below. And I'm sure David will come back and try and answer them for you the best I can. I hope this video has been of some use. Thank you for watching.